Saving energy is the first step in building a clean energy economy in America. As we lower our energy demands, wind and solar become more practical, affordable, and effective. I continued my journey in the southeast, looking for examples of clean energy in use today. In Jacksonville, Florida, I found an electricity provider with a plan. JEA is making a change for the better by tapping their most abundant energy supply. In Florida, we don't have a whole lot of different kinds of energy sources available to us. We have to bring it all in. But the sunlight's available to us. It's available to us year-round. So it makes sense for a utility in Florida to try to investigate ways of harvesting electricity from the sunlight. JEA has an ambitious vision. They offer rebates that pay for up to half the cost of solar panels if customers buy them for their homes. JEA's commitment to renewable power is one of the strongest in America. By 2015, JEA will have 7.5% of our capacity, our generating capacity, provided by green and clean renewable power sources. Considering that 60% of our electricity comes from coal and 25% from nuclear, 7.5% may not sound like much, but it is, because today less than one-tenth of one percent of our kilowatts are generated from clean sources like wind and solar. The good news is that there's much more energy available to us from the wind and the sun than coal or nuclear could ever provide. Coal may last 500 years. Um, solar energy will last at least 500 million years. Uh, and it won't destroy uh, the world uh, in the process because we're simply tapping energy that is falling on the earth every day. If we begin looking at the world from a new perspective, we'll find clean energy available to us in abundance. If you do an aerial survey of the flat roof space in a typical city, you'll find that as much as half of the electricity in that city could be supplied by just covering that flat roof space with uh, solar collectors. Every rooftop is potential energy. You can actually see now building integrated solar cells that are actually built into the shingles of the home, built into the glass of the home, where the home becomes a power plant where it's generating power all day long and people can actually take advantage of that. For building integrated photovoltaics, the applications are endless. You could consider replacing your marble facade on a building with a photovoltaic panel. So not only do you get something that many of us think looks really good, you get something that actually generates electricity and has a payback. I went searching for proof that homes can become self-sufficient using power from the sun. This is the home of the Schiller family near Clarksville, Tennessee, living completely off the grid. In other words, coal and nuclear free. Well, we have a 2,400 square foot house and uh, most days this uh, solar array provides all of our energy needs, actually a surplus many days, so that we're able to store up energy and batteries to use when the sun's not shining at night or during cloudy spells for a few days. Schiller's home takes full advantage of free energy from the sun. Well, the house is designed where most of the windows are on the south face. South-facing windows capture the sun's warmth in winter months, helping to heat the inside of the home. It's known as passive solar. Joe also taps the sun for hot water. In most homes, water heaters are one of the biggest energy users, but Joe gets his hot water for free. You know, three seasons of the year, we get most of our hot water from the sun. Joe also uses high-efficiency products inside the home to keep his family's energy use to a minimum. They use one-third the electricity compared to the typical home, and this makes it possible for the solar panels to provide all the electricity his family needs. The system costs less than $20,000. In other words, for the price of a new car, Joe Schiller has bought his family energy independence. In East Tennessee, I found solar-powered homes that are even more affordable. In this Habitat for Humanity subdivision, Oak Ridge National Laboratory and a team of volunteers are building a series of zero-energy homes for low-income families. They start by building highly efficient structures that minimize wasted energy. Then they add solar panels. This is a net zero-energy house. 
has all the amenities of any house except very efficient appliances, good windows, mechanical ventilation, and on the roof, solar collectors. At this moment in time, the house is actually producing more energy than it's consuming. You can see the meter for the solar going pretty fast and the net meter actually going in reverse. What that's telling us is that the solar energy is now being pushed across the grid and hopefully displacing some small amount of coal in a TVA power plant somewhere. Over the next three years, TVA will sponsor five Habitat for Humanity homes for what will become a zero energy neighborhood. The homes will have technologies that will enable these, the people that live in these homes to produce as much energy as they use, essentially net zero. A tremendous advantage, not only residentially, but also commercially and industrially. If the technology is available, what's stopping us from building a net zero nation? These solar-powered homes are proof that a clean energy nation is possible, but it left me wondering what Heather and I could do today on a tight budget living in an apartment. We've cut our electricity use in half, but we still consume about 500 kilowatt hours a month from coal and nuclear. We can't afford solar panels, so how can we accomplish our goal? Not one to give up, I kept searching and discovered this parking lot in Chattanooga. It's the largest solar facility in the South, providing electricity for TVA's Green Power Switch program. For the first time, electricity providers are giving us a choice other than coal or nuclear. Green power consists of wind, solar, and methane gas. We have a solar site like you see behind me here uh, that generates power. We have wind turbines that generate power up on Buffalo Mountain in Anderson County, Tennessee. We also have a methane wastewater treatment facility near uh, Memphis, Tennessee, which we extract methane from the wastewater and use that as part of our generation mix. And they'll build more green power as more people sign up, which gives us the power to make it happen. Participation is the key to the whole thing. You have to have folks willingly, and in our case, voluntarily, purchasing blocks of green power to make the program grow. Converting America into a clean energy nation begins with each of us. It was an easy choice for me and Heather. We called our electricity provider, and they sent us a green power sign-up form. With the money we saved from our energy-efficient lights and refrigerator, we could afford five blocks of green power. For 20 bucks a month, we get the peace of mind knowing that all of our kilowatts are generated from clean sources. Finally, Heather and I reached our goal. It's our responsibility to leave a cleaner future for our children and our children's children. Because if we don't do it, who will do it? Here's a challenge for all of us. Let's cut our electricity use by 30% or more in every home, school, and business. This will draw down electricity use in the southeast to the national average, bringing it down at the same time. As our electricity bills go down, let's sign up for green power, at least one block, and put solar technologies on our homes, if we're able. We can do this. Think of the jobs it'll create and the boom to the economy as we tackle this challenge. This effort requires cooperation from public officials and the government, utilities and manufacturers, builders, teachers and students, nonprofit organizations, and everybody, all of us, doing our part, starting at home. Come on, get excited. We owe it to the people of West Virginia and to our children. We owe it to ourselves to take this challenge seriously. If we do, I believe one day soon, we'll wonder how we ever let it get so bad in the first place. And we'll marvel at how easy it was to fix it. Thank you for taking this journey with me. The real journey is about to begin. <laughs>